An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Welcome back. My name is Sally Mundy, and I'm a candidate for the Superior Court. In this lecture series on the Superior Court, I'll be discussing briefly the history of civil litigation. I will provide you with some examples, and I'll discuss briefly the judge's role in civil litigation. That biblical quote forms the foundation for our common law which we brought from England to this nation, which we now refer to as civil litigation. Many of you have heard the theory of civil litigation growing up as a child with the phrase, you break it, you buy it. Now let me provide you with some examples of civil litigation. Automobile accident cases, medical malpractice actions, breach of contract actions, slip and fall cases. Suppose you're riding in an automobile and another driver runs a red light. He's negligent. He hits your car, he causes damage to your automobile, and you suffer bodily injuries. Under the law in this commonwealth, you can receive a remedy, money damages, to compensate you for your property damage as well as your bodily injury. That's civil litigation, receiving money for damages. Suppose you enter into a contract for the sale of goods. You provide the goods as contracted for, but you fail to get your payment. In our courts, you can obtain money damages for the money that's due to you under that contract. That's civil litigation. As a superior court judge, the judge's role is to, determine, is to determine whether a trial court acted fairly and impartially to the litigants. The superior court's role is to determine whether the litigant received a fair trial. There are many that question whether or not there is too much litigation in our state, whether they're right, or wrong, I hope you can see by these examples that without the remedies provided, as we discussed, those harm would not have any redress. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture and will take the time to listen to the other lectures in this series about the Superior Court.